how many cells can you solve in this Sudoku without making a mark? I'll not only show you how to solve competitive Sudoku faster without Snyder notation, but reveal a surprising tip to help you decide whether it is needed or you can just abandon it. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Look at where a two can go here in block two. You have this two cutting across the row. You have this two coming up. Only one place for a two right there. And I want to show you something. You notice that you have a three, four, five, six, seven across row one. You have this one, two right there. You have this eight, nine right here. Well, the one, two can't be in these two cells, so they have to be in these cells right here, and I'll mark them green. And so that forces this eight and nine, since they can't be here, to be in these two cells. We'll keep that in our working memory. Greetings, friend. I'm helping you solve round four puzzle one of the 2024 Sudoku Grand Prix hosted by China. This puzzle is rated 216, easy. See how far you can get without marks. And when I solve these green cells, I will reveal my secret tip that will change the way you use Snyder notation forever. Okay, we're gonna forego here in block eight with these two fours and this four, only one place for the four. And then you see with the ones, with these two ones, I can solve that cell for a one. And then with these two ones and this one, we can solve for a one right there. I'll give you a little bonus tip. When you're doing no mark solving, look for the greatest restriction. We only have two cells missing a three and an eight. Well, I have a three right there. This has to be your three. That has to be your eight. And then we can solve with this eight, an eight right here in block five. And now I'm gonna show you some hidden pairs. Remember, this is a one or a two. We have a three, four right here and a three, four right there. That pushes the three and a four to these two cells. That's called a hidden pair, which means the three and four have to be somewhere in block three. They take up those two cells. No other candidates can fill those two cells. And since we have a three right here, we can actually solve that for a three and solve that for a four. You want to see another hidden pair? Go over to block one. You have a four or five cut across here. You have this four or five coming up here. Only a four or five can only be in these two spots. Since we already just solved the four, that's going to be your four and that's going to be your five. Hit that like button if you spotted these hidden pairs. I'm going to give you a bonus tip. My second bonus tip, look for pointing pairs. All right. You see that we have an eight, nine here. We need to solve this for a six or a seven to complete block one. You may not think you can solve these two cells, but you can, right? Because you look right here in block two. And I'll highlight this in blue just to help you out. There's only two cells remaining. And we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. This has to be a seven or a nine. And since the seven and nine are restricted to these two cells, seven cannot be anywhere else along row two. That's called a pointing pair. It's actually a naked pair that acts as a pointing pair, which means this can no longer be a seven. That has to be your six, and this is gonna be your seven. So how many marks did you make when solving this puzzle? Please, please, please drop and share that in the comments. Share it with the other viewers. I need you to help me grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you so much that I respond every comment. Okay, now we can go over here since we have that one, two in our working memory for those green cells. This has to be a five or a six. Well, we just saw the five right there. So here's your five and here is your six. Now we're going to figure out which one's a seven up here and which one's a nine by using my right angle trick. This seven is going to tell us where a seven goes right here. And here's how it works. Because you have a seven right here, that means this can't be a seven. That's a nine. That's going to be a seven. So the right angle this way, then you go up here and go, okay, well, this can't be a nine. That's got to be your seven. So you see how we did the right angle to get right there? Nice. And now we can look across row eight here. We have five digits filled out, a one, two, three, four, and a six. We need a five, seven, eight, nine. Where can an eight go? Well, it can't be these two cells because of this eight. And because of this eight, it can't be here. You can solve the eight right here. And then I'll show you my other trick that I like to use. And it's called the neat naked triple trick. You have three cells remaining. In this case, we're looking for a five, seven, and a nine. If one of those digits is looking at two of the cells, and then the other one, is also looking at one of those two cells, you can solve all three because we know this has to be your five, your nine. 
The only place a 7 goes over there, and this is going to be your 5. Let's do that neat naked triple trick again in column 3. We need a 1, 2, and 9, because we already have a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, I have the 1 and the 9 right here, and it also works when you have two of the digits looking at one of the cells, and then another one's repeated. The 9 is looking right there. So in this case, we have two different 9s, and then we have the 1. We can solve all three. That's got to be your 2. 9 only fits right there. This is going to be your 1. Okay, now we saw this 9. You remember, our working memory, this is a 9 or an 8. So that has to be your 9. That has to be your 8. Where else can the 9s be? Well, with these two 9s and this 9, you have a 9 right here in block 6. And then with these two 9s, a 9 right here in block 9. Let's go for that greatest restriction. We have two cells remaining in column 7. We need a 2 and an 8. I got a 2 right there. So here's your 2, and here's your 8. And then with this 7 and this 7, we can solve for 7 right there. And with these two 7s, just kind of follow your cross hatching. We can put a 7 right here. And believe it or not, we can actually solve all the cells right here in block 4. Using another tip I call clumping, which is where you kind of focus on when you made restrictions if you can keep going. With these two 1s, we can put a 1 right here. And then this cell can't be a 1 or a 2, can't be a 3 or a 4 or a 5, it can't be a 7, 8, or a 9. This cell has to be a naked single 6. And now we can use a neat naked triple trick. We just need a 3, 4, and 8. And 8 and 4 right there. And then the uh, 8 repeats. So the 8's looking at 2 of the digits. The 4's repeated there. Solve all 3 here. Here's your 3. The only place 8 goes is right there. And that's got to be your 4. All right, let's do some clumping here in block 5. We need a 2, 4, and a 6. I got a 2 and a 4 right there. And the 4's repeated. You can solve all 3. That's got to be your 6. That's got to be your 2. That's got to be your 4. Even though we had additional digits, all I need is to see those three. You know, this and this, and, and we're going to solve all of them. That's why I show it to you. And now we have plenty of restrictions to finish block 6 up. First of all, we have a full house right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're just missing a 5. And then down here, we're missing a 3 and a 6. Well, I have my 3 right there. So here's your 3, here's your 6. And then this digit's going to be your 1. And so now it's time to solve the green cells and reveal my secret tip on when you can abandon Snyder notation. Since this is a 1, this green cell has to be a 2, and that's got to be a 1. And so my tip, the two conditions here when you can abandon Snyder. First of all, you need to know how hard the puzzle is. Snyder notation works great when the puzzle is medium to hard level. It gives you a really good idea of where to look and where the restrictions are. But it's just not needed on an easy puzzle like this. And then two, as you're going along, as long as the puzzle is giving way, you're finding more cells to solve, just keep on pressing. Because the sooner you start marking, that's the more clutter you're going to add to the grid. And then uh, when you have clutter in the grid, it's going to make it harder for your scanning. So instead, just keep pressing. You can always go back and add it later when you get stuck. And then you'll already have more cells filled out. So the Snyder marking is going to be a little bit less. Let's finish this puzzle. Now, okay, we got this 6 right here. It means the only place for a 6. And block 9 is right there, which means we need a 5. And we also need a 2. All right, follow these 2s and this 2 to put a 2 right there. And I don't see a 6 with these two 6s. That's got to be your 6. And the last digit is a 3. Challenge yourself to solve as much of this next puzzle without marks. Thank you so much for watching.